So Elgu very kindly sent me over this, which is their air purifier. So I'm gonna go with resin 3D printing. Now I did a video on one of these a long time ago on the channel, which is one of the little USB ones that plugged inside of the machine. In fact, didn't even have a USB, they were like battery charged ones. They made a little bit of a difference. So I figured I would take them up on their offer to see what this was like. Now, bear in mind, this isn't gonna be scientific. I don't have any of like the laboratory conditions to measure these. I'm basically in my garage, which I also use as a filming studio, but I can give you some anecdotal thoughts on this machine and whether or not it's worthwhile having a look at. And another thing as well is safety first. Whenever it comes to resin 3D printing, you wanna do as much as you possibly can to make sure that your setup is safe. So ideally, ventilation is one of your best things. You wanna be able to take all of those fumes that come off of your printer and vent them and just get rid of them completely. And then purification is also a nice step to have as well. In my opinion, you can't really be too safe, so it's nice to have something like this. So what is the Elgu air purifier? And basically, it's a machine that can either plug into the back of yours, so it's a separate device, and it has like piping and stuff like that that will come off of it, and it's really well wrapped, so I can't even get into it. And you basically will put it onto the backy machine and it'll suck out all the resin. So it's not even then getting vented out anywhere, it's basically closing off everything, which is a nice to have. One thing that was interesting to find out as well is it's not just exclusive to working with the Elgu machines. I found on my Frozen Mega, it also has the same vent hole on the back there. I need a knife. <laughs> this isn't working. We're in. Instructions, venti bit. Here we go. So, ugh. when I mentioned that it's compatible with other devices, so this bit clips on the back. So if you've got a 3D printer, you can measure up all the bits to see whether or not it's gonna be compatible. This would then go onto like the back of the enclosure or wherever it's got its venting hole and it screws in. And then this bit, I assume, one end of it will basically go into here and the other will go into the purifier. The idea is that whilst the resin printer is doing its thing and kicking out all of those fumes that you don't want to be breathing in, it's sucking them all through here. And ow, the clip just hit me in the finger and sucking it into the purifier, which then gives you a cleaner setup. And ideally it means it's not then leaking out everywhere else. Now, one thing that I'm really interested to find out is because I use the grow tent setup here. So basically everything, all my three printers are in there. And the idea is that that then keeps everything, I guess, in one area until I open it up at the front and then it all blusters out is whether or not I could hook this up to here and then purify the air in there. Oh wow. Is literally the same as one of those little mini ones that I used to have. I don't think I have any kicking around here anymore but I'll see if I can find some old B-roll of the footage. And you probably have seen it already, but this is literally a blown up version of that. It's amazing. So like I mentioned, obviously you've got your bit on the back here, and that would go into, and then this would duck. So realistically, as long as you can get like a secure seal with something like the grow tent, and I know a lot of you have gone for the grow tent thing as well, because a lot of you have told me in Discord or in the comments and stuff like that, you could get this, basically go into there and pull all the air out and purify it, or at least in theory you can. And my theories don't always work out. It feels pretty solid. It's got rubber feet on the bottom, which is nice because it means it's not gonna slide, like the table's moving rather than the machine, which is always good. So I'm gonna stop filming there. It's getting really hot. That light is really on my head. And we'll see how this performs and I'll come back to you and let you know. So I've now been using the air purifier for about two weeks now. And anecdotally, I can't tell you scientifically that it works, but anecdotally it works. And it works a lot better than I expected it to. So when I describe how I found it works, this is very much a case of do what I say and not as I do. So you should never really be exposing yourself to you know, any resin fumes or anything like that without a respirator and all of that jazz. But to kind of figure it out if it was working, I opened up the grow tent, which it's currently doing all the circulating inside of, and I didn't have my respirator on just to see if there's any smell. And the only way I can describe it is it's a really sterile smell. It smells almost as if there is just like, there's an absence of something. This doesn't necessarily mean that scientifically it's working. There will most likely still be some fumes and stuff like that that you don't want to be exposing yourself to. So, you know, don't rely solely on this. But it was odd. It basically, there was like no smell at all. It was a really bizarre kind of sensation. The other way that I kind of realized it was working is 
in this space at the moment until I properly ventilate it all through the back there and out into the big wide world and all of that is even being in the grow tent which does contain the vast majority of like heat and smell and everything else there it does still escape there is still like a smell and fumes and everything else that escape from that and when I open it you know it takes a little while for this whole area kind of like to dissipate and get all that smell outside as well when I had the purifier running with none of that it basically it just felt really sterile and odd inside of the grow tent and when I opened it up there's like no escaping like smell or anything like that so from a smell perspective it definitely works at least the unit that I've got and all in all I'm really impressed with it I remember the old little units used to again anecdotally make a difference when you had them inside of an enclosure this big one definitely doing it and I've been running two printers in there so I've got the frozen mega 8ks which is a really big printer, so there's a lot of resin in that vat, and it's doing a lot of curing, and it also got the Anycubic next to it as well, so it's the Anycubic M5S. So again, two relatively large printers, one like massively big, and one that's like medium to large size as well. So there's a lot of resin in there, doing a lot of stuff there, giving off a lot of fumes and everything else as well. And the mate, the little purifier, is doing a really good job, not even just being attached to anything, but having it through the little venting hole that's on the side of the grow tent and having it all sealed up. It's doing a really, really good job. So I'm very impressed with it. When you pop it open, it's got these like little two buttons on the side and you lift like the lid off. It's got a really big like charcoal filter inside of it. Like it's uh, yay big. And I'll try and get some B-roll up there for you. So you can tell it's got all the bits in there to basically capture everything, purify it and suck out any of those harmful bits that would normally be pumped back into the air and everything. So it's, uh, I think it's an impressive piece of kit. Would I recommend it? It's, it is really hard to recommend something like this because it could be one or two ways. It's very hard to obviously test it out and everything. And obviously you expect that Elgoo would have done all of their testing and everything else. And in a perfect world, so I'm not going to get on my high horse or anything here because not everybody has a separate space to have their resin 3D printers. Because ideally, if you, know, if you were getting on your high horse and you were going to gatekeep the hobby and everything else, you shouldn't be exposing yourself to any kind of resin. You should always be gloved up. You should always have a respirator. The printer should be in an enclosed space completely somewhere else. But realistically, if you go through Reddit or anything else or any like forums talking about resin 3D printers, you'll always see these horror stories and horror pictures of people saying, can I have my resin 3D printer in my bedroom as I'm sleeping? Or can I have it in my office? Or can I have it in this other enclosed space in my house where I'm going to be exposed to it? And if you're one of those people who don't have the space or anything else and you really, really want a resin 3D printer, then this kind of feels like the next best thing. And I would much rather that somebody went out and did resin 3D printing, if they were going to do resin 3D printing, and they paired it up with something like this, rather than nothing else at all. Because the alternative is that they've just got fumes pumping into their house or their bedroom, whatever else they're going to use it. Even in a setup like this, I think that's really good. Like I've mentioned, I want to vent everything outside, but then that becomes a bigger project. I'm going to need to look into a lot more different things and figure that out. This is an off-the-shelf solution that you can go out and buy and then hook it up with whatever enclosure you're using. So if you've got something like a grow tent like I'm using, then actually this is a really handy solution. You could have like a cupboard um, or something else that seals it all inside of and then have that hooked up to it and it works and it manages to do a decent amount of area because that grow tent, so if I move... Ah, there you go. That is it. Oh my God, I'm knocking things over. So obviously we've got the Elgu here. So that kind of gives you a size comparison compared to the grow tent here as well, which has got both printers. So that's a, a decent volume of air that it's basically taking out and circulating. There is one thing that I really don't like about it. It's not really don't like, I'm nitpicking at this stage. This button on the top worked as soon as I pressed it just then never does that like it's this capacitive touch button it doesn't click in it's not physical um like now trying to get it to turn off not having any of it takes quite a few little presses and stuff like that it's relatively quiet as well so if you are wondering about too old to stand up all this time if you're also worrying about having this in your room with your 3d printers that's the sound it's making now it's pretty quiet Compared to 3D printers, it's more quiet than them. And you can change the um, like the speed as well. So you can have it on like a low speed and a high speed and obviously depending on you know the noise that you want. So now it's on low speed, that was on high speed before. Can't hear anything. If I get closer to it with the microphone. 
that's the sound you're getting. So it's pretty quiet, it's decent, it's compact, it feels well made. It looks like if you've had one of the air purifiers from Elgoo beforehand, it looks like one of those just blown up. And as I said, I can't say scientifically because I don't have all the bits to record it and do all of that. I don't have those lab settings. I don't have the proper stuff to test all the air quality as well. Anecdotally, it works perfectly and it feels, it just smells weird. But I don't want to be a gatekeeper to this hobby. I want more and more people to be able to use it. And at the end of the day, you are not going to stop people from resin 3D printing in unideal spaces. They shouldn't be. Absolutely not. You shouldn't be exposing yourselves because you can gradually become allergic to it and all of that stuff. But no matter how many safety videos you put out there, no matter how many safety warnings and stuff you put out there, people are still going to do it. And I would much rather than pick something like this up so that way at least the air is a little bit safer to breathe than having nothing at all. A little bit of safety precaution is better than nothing. Obviously, the best thing would be to have loads of safety precautions, but that's just not going to happen. So there you go. Would I buy it? Yes. And uh, bear in mind, this has been sent over to me free of charge. So uh, there is going to be a bias there. But if that blew up, in fact, if it blew up, I probably wouldn't buy another one of these because that would be dangerous. But if I didn't have that, having used it now, if I had to send it back to Elgoo for some reason, I would buy another one of these because actually that paired with something like an enclosure or a grow tent is a really good and easy off the shelf solution to do. There are better ways of doing it though. So getting some ducting that would then connect to this and vent it all outside. That means I gotta go get a hole in my wall. I've gotta get ducting set up. I've gotta get fan solutions and all of that. That's a more involved solution, although it would be better long run to have something like that. It is more involved. This, I can just go on Amazon, buy it and get it shipped over. And this, I can do the same as well. Pair them up, you've got something that's not perfect, but it is a good solution. At least it smells good. It smells weird, but it smells good. So that's my conclusion in the end. So thank you so much to Elgo for sending this over. Oddly impressed with it. It's done a good, weird job. And it's so hard to explain something like this because I have no results to show you. It's not like when my 3D printer, so I can say, hey, look how cool this looks. This is like, hey, look how sterile this smells from my perspective that I can't demonstrate to you. But if you trust me, then actually that's a pretty good solution, at least in my opinion anyway. So thanks so much for watching. If you've got any questions about it, throw it down in the comments below. I'm going to get off my knees now because it's starting to hurt a bit, but I've got a fluffy carpet, so I guess that's something.